Hey everybody, quick video. So, there's a few things I'm trying to change about my behaviours this year that I really am feeling quite committed to, quite committed to, very committed to. One of them is I realise, and I've talked about this before, that I have a bit of a problem with caffeine. Some people that I've worked with before or work with now can drink four or five coffees a day and it doesn't really affect them badly. It doesn't seem to anyway. Maybe if they came off it, they'd realise how much of a clutch it is for them, or a crutch. But for me, if I have an actual cup of coffee, which I've never actually had a black coffee, but like a latte, which is a shot of uh, espresso and then milk and whatever, and sugar, that will fuck me up, dude. Like, I've done that before and literally not been able to sleep the entire night when I had it like six hours before going to bed. Now, you might know caffeine has a six-hour half-life, which means... If you were to have a Pepsi or a coffee or whatever's got caffeine in at 6 p.m., half of that caffeine content will still be in your system six hours later. And I'm that sensitive, and this is probably the reason why caffeine-free Coca-Cola and Pepsi Max now exist, because other people have a problem as well. I would have a pint, normally, quite often, of Pepsi Max or Coke Zero, with my dinner at let's say half six or seven. And then I would just wake up or I wouldn't be able to go to bed. I'd just be too stimulated and it would be like 1 a.m. and I've got work the next day. I need to be up at seven. I'm like, I can't fucking sleep, dude. I feel like I could go for a run right now. That's how sensitive I am. But because it tastes so good, I just couldn't kick it. Now, <laughs> I don't think four days without Pepsi is impressive, but it's a start because before Christmas, I managed to get two two-litre bottles for a quid. They're normally two for three pounds or two for three fifty. So when I saw I could get two for a quid, it was like a price glitch. I bought 30 bottles. We've still got about half of that in the house. Ellen's still drinking it because she loves the shit. But I've switched to lemonade. Still got artificial sweeteners in because it's the diet version. Maybe I don't need it every day. But I'm not it doesn't draw me in like a Pepsi would. And that caffeine effect. And yeah, I could buy the, the caffeine free, but that still seemed to just affect me. Maybe it was just in my head, but I just don't like being hooked to anything. I think it's bad. So I'm out for a meal later and I'm not going to have a Pepsi. I'll probably have a uh, some kind of soda, maybe even with sugar in, but, but no caffeine. Going to try and get rid of it for good. I'm already feeling a bit clearer because I'm just able to sleep now. Because I'm not stimulated, like I say, at 12 o'clock at night or whenever I should be going to bed. Along that same train of thought, games can be stimulating, video games. Now, for me, I guess any video game could be stimulating. Not really a game like Animal Crossing, where it's very relaxed. But right now, I'm playing God of War Ragnarok. You could argue that's a stimulating game because it's a bit of a violent game. You're, you're fighting the enemy. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if you're anything like me and you're a very competitive person, a game like FIFA, I have had a notorious problem with over years now, and I'm sure lots of people do, and people want to quit it, but it just addicts them. The amount of times I've uninstalled that game, but then I just crave it. I want to play it. I want to beat people because it feels so good to win. And maybe I don't get that kind of opportunity in my everyday life to beat somebody. And it feels so good. I'm, I'm up against one person. When you have a really good match, it's like 5-5 five, five, and you get that last minute goal, you win 6-5. It's like, fuck, that feels good. Let's play one more. And it's so easy to say just one more game, one more game, because the matches are like 10 or 15 minutes each. But it would get to the point where I'd play the game for six hours straight and I would start losing and then losing and losing and I'm getting more and more tired, but I couldn't realise, okay, I've played this enough now or I'm not in the right... Uh, frame of mind to play this game and it's also very scripted at times in terms of I feel like the game controls your AI like your defenders and your goalkeeper who you aren't directly controlling it's like predetermined if they're going to play well or not because sometimes it's like I'm smashing this guy next game my keeper's letting everything in and it's frustrating Call of Duty equally sort of bad in terms of being stimulating if you're playing it late at night, you can just say one more, one more, one more. They're just 10 minute games. And it is very uh, enjoyable to play, especially when you're playing well.
But I don't get as annoyed by that game at all because if I lose, I'm just not as good as the other players. And my mind's not as quick as some of these people playing it. Because I'm a 33 now. Some of these people playing a 18, they got all the time in the world. Their minds are quicker than mine. But um, yeah, I, there's other games to play. I think playing single player games, regardless of whether it's something violent like Call of Duty, uh, not Call of Duty, God of War, or uh, Last of Us, or Uncharted, not that that's really a violent game, but any game really that's action based can be stimulating, but I'm talking there are levels to this. I can play God of War for an hour or two and go, all right, cool, that was fun, I'll play it tomorrow. I can tell myself I'm going to do that before I start playing Call of Duty or FIFA, and then five hours of my life's gone. And then my other hobbies are being neglected. I bought that guitar last year, barely played it, so I need to put more effort into picking that up, like literally just picking it up. It's out of tune right now, no doubt. I need to play it. Another thing I want to get into uh, to improve my life overall is reading. I feel like I've lost the ability to read like I used to, and I'm sure lots of people are in this boat, thanks, thanks to stuff like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram, all of the social media stuff, man. It just makes us crave quick little videos that give us a little smile on our face, a little dopamine rush, that many of us have become very lazy. And I notice there are times at work where I'm reading something and it's just like, oh man, like I'm not very aware of what I'm reading right now. It's not sinking in. And so not only because I want my brain to function better, but I also want to learn to slow down and just be able to sit in a room with a book. And I used to love reading. I used to love reading thriller books by Linwood Barclay. I'm sure the, the books by Harlan Coben are really good. I'd happily reread the Harry Potter books again. So I've set myself a goal to read just 10 pages on my Kindle a day, and my writing's maybe a bit bigger than standard, because I, I just like the text to be a bit bigger. 10 pages is nothing. But with habits, you want to start small. People that say, right, I've never exercised this past six months, but I'm going to start training for a marathon, will probably fail unless their mindset's really made up on that. you got to just say, right, I'm going to do 30 sit-ups a day, because that is piss easy. That will take you a minute. And once you see that you can do it every day, I've read 10 pages, I can read more than this today, I feel like I'm enjoying this. Then you've suddenly become aware that, oh, this habit's become easier again, I can read books again, yes. And I'm not always just addicted to my fucking phone and wasting time on Facebook looking at other people's boring lives. And that's pretty much it, you know, I want to exercise more when the weather's better, because over the last few months I've not been getting out as much, but you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to have too many changes, but they're the ones I'm focusing on at the moment, and for clear reasons. Like, it's going to be good for me, and there will be temptations to reinstall FIFA and start playing Call of Duty again, but I have to tell myself, look what happened last time, look what happens every time. And my PlayStation record told me that I spent, I think, about 150 hours on the last FIFA game, FIFA 23, in the period of a year. Think of how much time was wasted that I could have been getting good at guitar, or reading books, or exercising, whatever. That was not time well spent, really. So, yeah, let me know what your goals are for the year, and uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.